Admire it. Admire this gold and black colored motherboard. Such a nice gold paint job with black accents. Such nice heat sinks. PCI Express slots look awesome. This is a real man's porn, none of that girl stuff. That's just stupid. This is real porn. Anyways, so um, I decided what we're going to do next. We're going to install everything on the motherboard, like the RAM and the CPU setting over there. And then we're going to install the motherboard in the computer. And I've already done a test fit on the motherboard to make sure that the CPU backplate cutout, this big cutout right here, um, the CPU on the motherboard does fit inside that. So I can install the CPU cooler after I install the motherboard, which is going to be awesome because that's easier than installing the cooler on the motherboard because then you end up with something like you have here because I didn't remove the CPU cooler on this one when I took out this motherboard and installing a CPU cooler, or rather the radiator plus the motherboard at the same time is actually quite difficult to do. So uh, we'll install the CPU cooler after the motherboard's in but for now we're going to install the RAM and the CPU itself. So in the CPU box, which is the blue thing at the top right corner of your screen, there was this paper pamphlet, which is the instruction manual, I assume. And then I don't know what this thing is. Like, what is this? Anyone know what this is? Because I sure don't know what this is. It has, like, gold connectors here. There's probably 2,011 of them. But I don't know what that is. I mean, I bought this. This is what I bought. I don't know what this thing is. No, not really. <laughs> this is the CPU. It's one heck of an awesome CPU. I don't know how to open this thing though. That's why it's still here. I didn't bother opening it. Um, is this how? Yeah, I think this is how you open it. The CPU is really not much to look at, but uh, it is one heck of an awesome CPU. Maybe that's going to be a trend with this build. <laughs> The SSD wasn't much to look at, but I know it's one heck of an SSD. Same with the CPU, I mean, there's no such thing as a beautiful CPU. I guess you can say no manufacturer ever decorates them with like little flowers or race cars or that's all, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But here's the CPU, so let's go ahead and install it. 4930K, oh yeah. I remember back when Intel put the pins on the CPU and not the motherboard. That was probably the better way to go, to be perfectly honest. I wonder if I'm in one ear for you guys, because I'm on the left side of the camera right now, and this camera has two microphones, one on each side. <laughs> if I'm in your left ear, it's probably really annoying you. But maybe I'll fix that in editing if I am. Maybe. No promises. So, uh, which way does this CPU go? Where's the arrow? There's the arrow. And do the notches line up? Yes, the notches line up. So my CPU goes in this way. I had better not mess this up. I have yet to ever mess this up, but there's always a first time that's possible. Why is it not going in? There we go. Now it's going in, and I think it's in pretty well. So let's go ahead and close this without slamming it on the CPU. And then let's crush the CPU. Very slowly. Oh, this part. I hate this part because you're putting so much pressure on the CPU. Like, you just so delicately put it in the socket and then you got to put so much pressure on it. Well, there we go. Um, hopefully it's good. We won't know till we're completely done with the build and then the computer doesn't turn on and then it could be anything at that point because it's pretty much a brand new build. <laughs> that would suck, wouldn't it? So anyways, the CPU is in, so next we're going to open the RAM and then we will install it. Actually, before we do that, I want to make a point for anyone else who's building a computer or, or who builds computers. If you see that little defect on the CPU right there, that is not really a defect. That's just a piece of leftover thermal paste, because Intel manually tests every single CPU. That's how they figure out what to call it, like a 
4960X or 4930K or 4820 of the same CPU. Like, it's the exact same CPU, but they disable certain features based on whether or not they actually work on that CPU. So Intel tests every single CPU. I'm sure AMD does as well. They probably have to in order to bend them properly. So uh, if you ever see that, it doesn't mean your CPU is used. It just means that it was tested by whoever made your CPU. Now let's go install or open the memory. So now for the RAM. I already went and took it out of the main box, but it is still sitting in the plastic packaging as you can see. But I wanted to show you guys this. The RAM is by Mushkin. It's four four gigabyte sticks, and the speed is PC three seventeen thousand. Yeah, you can see it right there. And that means DDR3 2133. My intention is not to run it at 2133 speeds, even though it does those speeds. My intention is to run it at 1866, and the reason I bought 2133 was because I didn't like the look of any of the 1866 kits. I do like the look of these, however. These are good looking RAM in my opinion. It's actually the exact same RAM I had on my previous computer. It's still sitting in the motherboard. I can't even show it to you. So here's the motherboard from my old computer. You can see the, th well, three of the six RAM sticks right there are the exact same RAM that I have bought for my new computer. They look exactly the same, because they are the same. <laughs> Imagine that. The only difference is that these run at 1600 megahertz, while those run at 2133. But like I said, I intend to run them at 1866 with lower timings, because 2133 is too fast for my liking. Um, I... Well, I don't know about Ivy Bridge E, but in general what I've seen is that uh, you, if at some point when you get faster speeds, the timings just make it to where you don't get much of a performance increase at all, and sometimes it's actually worse than slower RAM. So I have decided to downclock the RAM that I bought <laughs> as a result. But that's not the topic for now. The topic for now is to open these RAM kits. <laughs> yeah, come up with a name. So uh, let's go ahead and open these. I'm just going to take out one stick for you guys. You guys don't need to see me open all four sticks. So here is a stick. I personally do like the look of this RAM quite a bit. Especially this side. This side looks nice and clean. This side has a sticker, which is a very helpful sticker, but it still has a sticker which makes it look not quite as good in my opinion. But, oh well, this is my RAM. I like it. Let's go install it now. Alright, so let's install the RAM. And I'm going to make the first stick that I put in the one that I opened for you guys. So, um, I read my motherboard manual and I'm supposed to put the RAM sticks in the dark gray slots because I have only four DIMMs, not eight DIMMs. So that means this slot does this side not open? Is this only one side that opens? I've never seen RAM slots like this. That's interesting. Yeah, both sides don't open. That is definitely interesting. So, uh, I'm going to put this stick in first. This is the one I opened for you guys. Now, if any of you are wondering, hey, CMA Supra, why don't you use the RAM from your old computer if it's still good? The answer is, well, two reasons. One, it's slower, as I already told you guys, and two, it's triple channel, not quad channel. Um, this motherboard is based on the X79 platform, which is a platform that supports four DIMMs running together, which is what I've bought. I've bought four RAM DIMMs, and I want them to run together so that they run in quad channel mode, which is faster than triple channel. It's also faster than dual channel, as you would probably expect. Did I grab the wrong stick? I sure did. I'm trying to keep them together based on what pack they came in. This goes like this. So, um, yeah, you get more speed out of these because the sticks are faster and because they're running in quad channel mode instead of triple channel. I could put the other sticks in and the motherboard would still work perfectly fine, but I have no need for the extra space and it would only make my system slower, I am pretty sure. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it would. This is so weird. I'm not used to the having one side of the RAM slot not lock into the RAM. 
or not having me lock into the RAM anyways. Go in! Maybe it's not in all the way. Hmm. <laughs> CMA Super is failing to put in RAM, which is one of the easiest things to upgrade when you upgrade a computer. And granted, I'm building one, but it's still the same idea. Why won't this go in? Is this not... I don't think this is even close to all the way in. What the heck? I have this the right way. Hmm. There we go. That took a lot of work. Maybe this one won't take as much work. Hopefully. These are the dark gray slots, right? <laughs> now that I've put all four sticks in, almost. Yes, these are the uh, the dark gray slots, not the black slots. There we are. That stick is in. And I guess there's nothing holding the RAM in on the other side. It looks like it just slides in and that's it. It just holds it so it doesn't go like sideways like that. It doesn't look like it actually puts pressure and holds it in. That's going to be interesting. Hopefully I don't get any issues with the RAM, like, slightly disconnecting every once in a while. That would be very, very bad, because I'm pretty sure it would crash the computer. And crashing often is not something I like. So, um, RAM's in, CPU is in, and there is nothing else that I need to put on the motherboard. So I think the next thing I'll do is install the motherboard in the computer.